everyone. Welcome to Weekend Project. I'm Laura Lynn of the Mama Pop Quilt Shop, and we're very happy to see you here today. We're working on block five of our 2017 Christmas quilt, and we're doing a cardinal. Very representation of Christmas and all the things that go with Christmas and the birth of Christ and so on and so forth. So we love the cardinal. And though the pattern is out there for you to see and find, we just made it so you could use it and so you know we posted it just the other day so take a look at the pattern and hopefully you can follow along and uh, we're not taking any credit for this so it's already been out there we just made it so we people could actually do it so uh, the instructions are right there pop has a little bit more detailed for you guys but you know we're, we're good to go isn't it beautiful I love it okay so it says you need the cutting instructions are right here it says cutting diagrams Two and a half by two and a half, 12 patches of the white and eight patches of the red. Okay, and I did two shades of red. One has a little bit of a pattern to it. Actually, both of them have a little bit of pattern to it. One's a little bit darker with a swirl and one looks like uh, maybe a little bit of a geometric shape to it, okay? So those are my two and a halfs and two and a halfs, my 12 and my eights. And then you need two and seven eights, seven of the green, which is gonna represent your leaves or your branches or what have you on your tree. And then you need 15 patches of two and seven eighths, but you're gonna mark them as you would with this, your, this ruler here, right along there, or easy enough to do. There we go, I had another one already prepped. Right there with your, your half ruler right from edge to edge, and then you know you ride your foot along that side and you're gonna stitch a quarter inch away from that. So either way you do that, you have to mark those ones up. So that's 15 of those and eight patches of the red, seven of the green, 15 of the white. Okay, that's that section. Now, for the beak and the head part of the beak where it's black and red, you're gonna need three and one quarter square. It's easiest to do the square part and then you're just gonna cut them. So if you wanted to do four cardinals, you really could because you're gonna have those little bitty bobs left over from these two sections to do them if you wanted to. So you're just gonna mark them and you're gonna cut on those lines, but you know you're gonna stitch on the quarter inch on either side of that and then when you cut, it's gonna get your piece that you need. It's pretty much a half, half of a triangle triangle really so two halves make it to the triangle at that section okay so we're gonna get sewing okay paying attention all right let's go now you want right sides together and I just chose a nice little white uh, it's got a little tiny swirl to it it is different from what is in the what I have at my stars but if you have the same it doesn't matter this one has just a tiny little hint of cream to the background and this is just really white 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 so okay love it and of course that was uh oh shush he's been yappy all right so i'm just riding my foot and we're just going to chain piece these okay we're just we're going to work with these uh all the reds and the greens and the oh the reds the whites and the greens i'll put them together the way they need to be <laughs> <laughs> He's meowing at the door. <laughs> There's nobody there. <laughs> silly kitty. He's a silly kitty. So I'll show you my quickly my Christmas project that I was working on this week. I just kind of designed it myself. My girlfriend asked for a table runner. So here's half. Here's half of the table runner. And then here's the other half of the table runner. And then I'll show you it all stitched out. And I just free motion stitched it on this, on my big domestic here. So there's the table, isn't it cute? So I just kind of, you know, designed it. I have, you know, material here and I'm, I'm pretty smart sometimes. So that's what I thought of. What do you think of that? Hopefully she likes it too. She's giving it away to people, so. And then I just chose a white back and you could see all the little, you know, free motion uh, swirls and then the waves and so on and so forth that for the wind and so, so for anyways, I thought it was really kind of cute. And hopefully they like it too. So getting in the Christmas spirit. Okay, so put that over there. <laughs> all right, back to sewing but slowly getting in the spirit. It's been cold in the morning, so beautiful during the day though. It's, uh, it's actually, the wind is kind of nice. I like, I like it windy. If I wasn't so busy, I'd be out flying a kite. I like, oh, this one's a little wrinkled, so let's go press it. Sorry. <laughs> do, do, do. I was trying to get as much prepped as I could before Pop was ready to film, so. 
And I, this also, when I you have your half square triangles, I chose a solid red and the same red with the little geometric sort of aztec -y kind of pattern to it for the bigger half squares. So, you know, I've got different chunks for the small squares, for just the solid squares, and a couple of different chunks for the uh, bigger half squares. So, you know, mix and match. You know, cardinals are all sorts of different reds, right? And if you want, you can make the female one, which just take on a little bit of tans tans and browns and still keep some a little bit of the reds uh, and you can also make yourself a the the female version obviously the reds are uh, the bright red ones are the male the male birds so. as we've discovered with our six roosters they're very handsome and good-looking roosters <laughs> but we don't want them <laughs> like a beautiful plumage on them I'm like oh my god why do the boys always have to look so pretty <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it comes to fowl. The peacock, the male peacock is, you know, he's the brightest and the bluest and the greenest and, you know. Alright, then we do the greens. Now we got pretty much our reds halfway down. We're going to chain. We're just going to chain. We'll try and do this as a uh, quick as we can video. There is a lot to do on it because there's a lot of squares. But in the end, it's going to look really pretty. And because our end result is really 13 uh, inch square, we're going to add a little, I think it's called curmudgeon. I'm probably wrong, but uh, just a little bit of our border or sashing piece just on one of the sides that we like it to be sit on. We can choose that when we're starting to put it all together. So that's not a big decision right at the moment. Worry about that when we get to it and not before. Do, do, do. It had seven needed for, see, I wasn't sure if it was seven sets or seven, just seven half square triangles. I bet you if I probably just would have counted one, two, three, four, five, six, it was seven half square triangles. So I guess really only needed to do four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that would give us seven, eight. So, yeah, that makes sense. So maybe I'm making, I could end up with two cardinals in this. Someone's getting a pillow. <laughs> Just want to make sure we're having enough. So that would give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we only need seven. So seven patches. So that makes sense. If it's only seven patches of it, and I counted right there on the image, like I could show you right there, there's three at the top and then four at the bottom, that equals seven, so, you know, it's not rocket science, I think, I think we got this, so, I think this pretty much gives you almost enough to make yourself, uh, make yourself two, two, um, two cardinals, you just need to add your extra 12 and eight patches there, bibbity bobbity boo you got yourself two cards and no lose. I don't know. I'm just trying to rhyme. <laughs> fabric. <laughs> and then my fabric for green is just a green with a little lighter green polka dot on it. Nothing too fancy. I wouldn't even say anything too Christmassy. I just, I just thought it was kind of cute and I liked it and it would kind of pull in with a bit of the other greens that we got going on. Okay. So now we're going to flippy loo our little kite tail here and so on the other side so we've been having a lot of fun with our uh, live stream on Sundays and hopefully you guys get a chance to uh, partake in that if you have not already we're working on our Christmas tree skirt and uh, we're just trying to trim it around the side now but I think if I were to do this a second time around, I'm going to pin from the bottom. I should have probably thought of that ahead of time, but clearly in all my excitement, it wasn't a thought in my head about that. So I would pin from the bottom and go and leave the center top to be very flexible and, and what have you, because really nobody's going to see that part. They're going to see the end part. So I really should have thought of that, but that's the way, you know, hindsight is 2020. I learned something and I always say, I've always tried to learn something on every single project. And, uh, I may just, if I'm bored one of these nights, start ripping and repinning. So the best that I can. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. And all you lovely ladies who were very generous enough to order a uh, seam ripper, they are in the mail. 
So wait for them. They will be coming shortly and they're very beautiful. I did the inspection. <laughs> Make sure they were good enough for you. All right. Okay. We probably didn't need to do this many red because we only needed eight patches. So like I said, you got <laughs> enough to do a few now. So, all right. So we'll put one section of that because that gives us two of that color, that red and that white. And then that gives us four. And that gives us six. And then I really like that patterny bit. So let's go back and grab that one again. And that gives us eight. Okay, so we got those guys off to the side. Uh, the greens. We have the two, four. Oh, I was just going to say, where'd the other one go? <laughs> what happened here? So as you can tell, Nomi's back from the doctor. Uh, apparently, I use them a lot. Really? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> and he said he was very dirty, and I thought I was looking after him. So, oh well. He needs a bath more often. <laughs> and I got a little software update, so I can't. I don't know what's new with it yet. So, I said something about quilt maker. I'm like, woo, fancy words. Okay, so there's our two, four, uh, and then we were gonna do two more, right? because we needed seven. I'm not missing them. Oh, no, there we are. Okay, I was just gonna say, I thought we already did them. So that gives us seven of those. Okay, and then we have our solids are ready to rock there. Let's move these doodads, because they seem to be in the extra pile, and we will sew these two together. So the reds, the red and the black, you wanna sew together, because that is part of the head, the head and the beak just before it hits the nose, which it will be the yellow and the white. And you want to sew um, on the quarter inch half of this line. So if it was just lined up like that, you'd be sewing right there and right there. And then that middle section would be your cut line. Okay, so let's do that first. You probably could change thread if you so wish. Nah, I live dangerous. Okay, and we will just, so down on the other side and then just do that again to the other two and cut and that should give us one of these should be exactly what we need for our part of our head for the cardinal there we go <clears throat> Okay, so that's how it's gonna look before you cut, and then you're gonna cut here, and then cut there, and then one of these little bitty bobs here is gonna be your buddy that you need, okay? At least that's from what I understand, okay? I should probably figure that out first before we do the second one, okay? To make sure that's what we're gonna need. Okay, so cut, and cut, okay? Okay, why is it all attached? I guess I shouldn't have attached both sides. Because one of these should be a triangle. Hold on here. Doo doo doo. Maybe I should have only sewn on one side. I thought, wait a second, how's that gonna work? Unless I was supposed to sew all the way around on the outside. Uh oh. I just thought of that. Hold on. Okay, well that gives us our piece that we need. Okay. And then we need another red, one of these red half square triangles. So let's see if these match up before we continue any further. Okay. Because we didn't, um, we didn't troubleshoot. Uh, well, I guess we only need what, eight, right? So we should have cut one without. Did I sew up all the reds? Oh, I did. Okay, here, let's cut one and take the seam out real quick because I think that's what I did wrong because you need the other half, right? That makes sense. That's okay, living and learning. This is what, uh, what's the software? Um, EQ7. So Sometimes it's not intuitive thinking. You have to kind of think for it. So let's see if hopefully 
If not, then I did that wrong and I should have sewed it on the outside edge and cut just on those. Because it doesn't give you sewing diagrams, it just gives you um, cutting diagram. Oh, there we go. We're good. Yay. Okay. Woo. <laughs> the panic attack. <laughs> okay. So if we put that together the way it's supposed to, that gives us our block like this, which it sits just like that. Actually, it sits just like that. And then the other beak would be here. So, okay. So that's obviously right. So we can stitch that together. Good, good, good. Yay. All right. Mm -hmm. I love a learning process. And then that will be treated now as a square, as a two and a half inch square, which is pretty much what it should even out to be once I get the little press seed. And that's where when the different colors of reds really kind of help build the bird, like it helps give that bird that texture and the, the color that it needs. So we'll put another two and a half inch square lined right up to that. And I'd say we were pretty good with a little trimming. Yay, okay, woo. -hoo. And then those are for the other one, okay? All right, so we do, we need that. We got our buddies here. Let's cut these and we'll start sewing some, oh, actually we'll do this. And we'll start sewing them together. Cause it won't take long. It won't take long, I promise. Okay, so I only wanna sew on the one side. Don't I? Well, unless I want to make more, which I could very well want to make more, because I think this would make a great pillow, a great gift, a little wall hanging for somebody. Don't know quite what to give them. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Okay, here, and then we'll trim her there, and there we go. Now we got our beak, okay, which we want that side of it, okay. And then it that where's our little white buddy that we just trimmed off, and him and him go together. There we go. And we got my stitch line already there, and that makes the rest of the beak. So we got that important part of the head where it distinguishes the male with that black and the red, and then the yellow of the beak. Of course, mine's a very uh, subdued yellow. Um, the bright yellows that I had were really more of a broadcloth, and I really wanted this to, to work and look pretty and not be, you know, because it was a tiny piece, I didn't want it to be punctured down in there. Okay, so he'll go off to the side. And these are our solids, and we're just going to trim these guys up to what we need them to be for the half squares. Okay. That's going to make our leaves. Make sure you're lining them up. Get a little trim. Secret word is with, W-I-T-H, with. Hopefully everybody's having a fantastic Saturday. I'm, I'm cutting them all. I only needed seven though, but whatever. I'm already here. So one, oops, got to trim it all the way through though, dorky dork. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One to the extra power. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, seven, eight, there we go. Okay, now we should have everybody ready for the party. Okay, let's press these guys open and press these guys open and then we're ready to rock. Okay. Do do do. Of course you can trim your little tails off, your little ears off, put them in your collection bucket or what have you. Whatever you're saving them for, if you're saving them. If you're not saving them, toss them. <laughs> Just don't toss them to the floor. It's more to sweep up. All right, now you just bring the pest to the dark on pretty much all of these. Getting excited for Christmas. All these little blocks are starting to come together, and you can tell already it's going to make a beautiful quilt. 
We still got a couple more. And we're obviously we have more uh, seven more to plan, but um, we're excited to be doing some different things. So check out uh, mid midweek or to later next week to have the plans ready for the next Saturdays. So we're trying to get to get them out beforehand so people have an idea what we're doing, what chaos is happening. <laughs> All right, so, oh, that was, I didn't even need to press that because I've already made the beak. Oh, see, I'm ahead of the game. I'm already ready to make another one. <laughs> All right, trim some of these taily whalies. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. Happy for it. Hopefully it sticks around for Halloween. It's been too windy to put my... Halloween decorations out. I don't want them blowing away. So as they say, very blustery day, says Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I used to love reading that book. And whenever it would be windy, Munchkin would say, it's a very blustery day. <laughs> All right, making a mess. Pretty little fabric mess. Alright, hold on. Do do do. So I did a little demonstration at my local library on Wednesday night. And of course Janice, my Gildian friend, she was there as well to help support and show off the quilt as you go a little placemat and table runners and stuff. It was she's working on some beautiful things. It's like, ooh, Christmas gifts. <laughs> oh, let's trim these guys here. Do do do. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Chatted some people up. Hopefully got them not to be afraid of sewing. Because there's really nothing to be afraid of. Just think of all the stuff you can make. Now she was watching me just kind of put a little four patch. Actually, you know, was the, I was making the fabric organizer. And she was watching me put the nine patch together. So anyways, a couple of people. Anyways, it was kind of fun. All right, so here's our pieces. Now we're just going to follow our block layout. We got... A solid white, a half square red and white, a solid white, a solid white, a half square blue, a uh, blue, I don't know where I'm getting blue from, green, <laughs> it's not even blue on this side, a half square dream, green, dream, green, and a half square green. I have not been drinking, I assure you. All right, so we want to put our solid and our half square and make sure they're going in the correct direction or you're going to have some really wonky looking cardinal. Okay, so it's coming down this way because you're making the top of the head. So if you just want to piece together and do a row at a time, that's pretty much what I'm going to do. So let's just line them up and we'll just do one row at a time. And hopefully it won't take too long. If it does, we'll be fast forwarded at this point. <laughs> Now we got these two. We got that little bit together. Let's give it a little press. Now we're going to add these two last little buddies. You only got six squares to deal with in the cross. So let's make sure these are going the correct way. So that green is in that lower corner and then that green is in the upper corner. So it's almost look, look like it's doing a little bit of a pinwheel all the way around. So let's sew so these two together and then we'll attach it to the white. Make sure I have it going the correct way. Yes, I do. If you wanted to do your cardinal facing the other direction, you just do the blocks in reverse. It's pretty simple. I, that's how I would, I would do it. Okay, three, first row. So what are we, six by six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six by six. All right, so we've got five more, five more rows to go. Okay, <clears throat> now this is where the beat comes into play. We want to make sure it is 
in this direction, facing the beginning part of the head, right? Where it's gonna, the black part is gonna go right here. And then there's the yellow part, okay? So we'll make sure that we're lining those up together. It's in the proper position. Okay, can you see that? The little face coming together right there a little bit. Okay, and then we'll lay out our other, because this is where we want to make sure we're variegating with, not variegating, but switching it up with the colors of the reds, right? Let's put this little dark one right here at the neck. Is that right? Mm, hold on. Yes, it is. Okay, like that. And then we're going to use a white. And then we're going to use a green, which is in the lower corner. No, nope. hold on. The white is touching there. Yeah, so that would look like that. And then another white, OK? And that's the second row, OK? So let's sew that together. So we know the pattern works. I didn't make up another uh, cardinal beforehand, so I we didn't we didn't know. So I'm I'm assuming by the calculations and the cuts and stuff like that that it was going to work. I didn't really see anything wrong with it, and uh, I kind of know that software from a couple of other projects that we've done. So I assumed it was you know cut here and stitch there. So all right, so that's there's two. Let's put these two and then attach. Know me sounds so much better. <laughs> the stitch, <laughs> the stitch count on it was uh, <clears throat> pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Considering I've only had him for less than two years, <laughs> it was a big stitch count. All right, see, look at our cardinals coming together. Then let's press, press this row. You know, and if you want, you can att attach each row right away, or you can just kind of build up and go like, I'm, I'm going to try to. So let's put him over here. Actually, put him on this, put him on the back side here so you can see him. Okay. Oop. Nope. I already messed up. Goes on top. <laughs> I'm like, good gravy. <laughs> what the heck is happening here? Doesn't take much to get confused. Okay, so now we need a solid. And a solid, I put a little pattern, because that's that solid right there, that solid red. So now I want a little bit of pattern right under his chest here. And then next to him, I want a little bit of that swirly bits. And then maybe some more of, maybe some more of the little patterny bit. And that way, and then we need two solids, okay? So, oh. <laughs> All right, so that is our third row. So it's a solid white, solid red, solid red, half square, solid white, solid white, okay? And that's how that third row will go together. Well, we know those two are together, so let's just sew those. Okay, I couldn't quite tell with this one fabric, with the red with the little swirl on it, so it must be a batik, both of them actually are. Um, so which way which which way went? So I'm like, oh, well, they kind of both look good. It's hard to tell. Oops. A little corner got folded up there. We don't want that. Okay, now put those little three pack together. Okay, we know that's at the end. Use this white. Okay, this is at the beginning. So so solid to solid of the reds and then solid to solid for or the half square to the solid of the white okay and then just add that one and then we'll press the row I figured this was totally doable and if you like the block a lot put it in there a couple of times you know you can make your quilt as big as you like right that's up to you. 
Mr. Cardinal. <laughs> All right, next row is white. And let's mix it up with the red. Okay, Oops, that's, there's the white, there's the white, there's the white, there's the red. Do this one, then we need another solid, and then a half square. Okay, this is working out, and then a solid white. Okay, rocking and rolling. Look at us go. Okay. In no time at all, you will have built a beautiful cardinal. And you can use probably browns instead of greens if you wanted it to be like a winter tree, you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it's up to you, it's up to you really. We'll have to figure out some Christmas music Cause my singing is horrible <laughs> All right, Let's put these guys together Make sure they're in the right order of the different squares next to each other And hopefully, oops, hopefully it'll give that little bit of depth to the cardinal like it's uh, giving it feathers Oops Did not like that at all What's going on over there? Let's go down on the other side. All right. Say, listen, buddy. I just got you back. <laughs> Be giving me no sass. Just work. <laughs> All right, I'll give this one a press. And then we only have two more rows to go. There we go. And if you only had one red, that it's it's still gonna look beautiful. It really is. If you only had one red, you can really add the depth uh, with the quilting or whatever you want to do. You can hand stitch some from you know with red th thread or something like that to give it some depth and dimension. I think we're at a are we out of white squares? We're not. I, don't think, I think we need more than just 12 patches of white here. Um, all right, let's uh, go white. Hold on, one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, nope, I was on the wrong row. I was like, wait a second here. Smath is not good. All right, so green in the lower, red in the upper, and like a little bit of an angle with that white. Okay, now we need this one, because that's going to go under there. And then we need another one. So we need one, two, three solids. Okay, then we're going to switch this around. We're going to do that in the middle. Okay, and then this half square goes like that. Okay, so that is the fifth row, right? Just double checking. Do, 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 do. Yes, we're good. Always double check or the seam rippers, your best friend. <laughs> it will be <laughs> if you're not checking. <laughs> And if you have bigger half square triangles to play with or bigger squares to play with, you can make this a big one. I mean, you know, like I say, only limitation is your imagination. <laughs> to do 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 all right is that in the right position yes it is all right and then we just got the last row to do and we should have enough yeah i was on the wrong row i was counting too many uh whites like wait a second it looks like we were short about three or four but we're not oopsies I like that little corner. 
should come in just a little bit more. Sometimes if you're finding that with some of your fabrics, it wants to chew it up in the corner a little bit. I'm starting too close to the end. So come up a little bit more and then start and then you can always back tack and then come forward. Some, some of those broad cloths and thinner fabrics like the shears and the satins and this, um, the silks and stuff like that uh, could use a little extra. Start, start ahead, back tack, and then come forward again. Other than that, you're just going to chew up your bits and you're just going to get angry. Okay, there we go. Oh, I'm loving it. Loving it. All right, one more. So let's go this way because that's how it's going to rock it. And then this one's going up this way. And then the last one over here is going down this way. And then we have a solid white with extra thread and a solid white and then a half square. I was just going to say, there's got to be a half square somewhere around here somewhere. And that goes up this way and finishes off his beautiful tail. Oh, I'm loving it. Loving it. And like I said, we need to add a little bit of curmudgeon or a little PC biscuit cutter thingy majiggy, whatever onto whatever side you want to put it on, depending how you're going to place it in your quilt section, like how, how, when you lay out your quilt. All right, so let's sew these together. And then when you pin your rows together, you want to match up those seams. You really do. So get your pins out and match them up. And you can always add any extra with stitching or yarn, buttons, beads, sequins, whatever. You can add whatever you like. Okay, just did I flip that wrong? No, I didn't. Okay, whoop. So if it's not too long of a video and you're sticking it out because it's, it's worth it. Okay, so that would be the end. That would be the end. Yes, and then it would go this ways and a lot of ways, right? Yes. And this one. Hmm. There we go. Okay, and then you're just going to line up your rows and pin your sections and off you go to the races. Okay. All right. Do, 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 do. Now, where's my pink cushion? All right, work from our bottom up. Go like this. Wiggle and swiggle your, uh, snuggle your seams. Okay. Line them up the best you can. If you have to tug a smidgey, that's okay. Just trying to get them close to those the seams as possible right next to each other because that's what's really going to define the effect of the cardinal. Okay, so just double checking that's a section I want to sew to each other. Yes, it is. And sew down. Okay, and then come take your pins out just before you get to that seam. Oh, come on. A little thick. Okay, pull it out. Okay, line them up all the way even right to the end. It's not just the seams that are important, it's the end parts too. Okay. Okay, so there's our bottom. Like I said, we'll work, we did from the top down, we'll work from our bottom up to make them, okay? Look, he's looking good. Okay, and because most of that's red, 
the top. Let's just do a little press up. There we go. Okay. So we'll put them there. Start building them. Okay. Now we'll do these two and then those two and then we'll sew the two to two together. Okay. I find it sometimes easier to work with that way. And of course with the whites, because it's white on white, just make sure you're flipping flopping those little uh, seams, okay? So you're not having all four of them tucked onto one side. Same with the reds. And of course the more pattern that you have on your reds, I wouldn't maybe add anything with berries or bells or anything like that unless it really was subtle. Um, because uh, it would probably just take away. Make sure I'm sewing the right ones together would be those pieces. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. So I'm not afraid of the seam ripper. <laughs> I didn't like how I quilted up a quilt once, and uh, it's actually, it's been a couple of long hard Wednesdays, the cotton candy, cotton candy cane quilt, and uh, we called them anything, so those are the two words really, and, uh, <laughs> and I spent eight months picking it out, picking out what I'd stitched already on it, so, and then restitched it. So I, I'm really, really intimate with the seam ripper. <laughs> oh. Okay, so that's going to go that way. Okay, see how beautiful that's looking? I'm loving that. All right, now let's put these two together. I'll just snuggle those seams next to each other. They're going to hang out for a long time together on our Christmas quilt. Do, do, do. Okay, it's a busy intersection here because you have a couple seams coming down. One, one, two, three, four. So be careful. Take your time. You may take a little bit slower when you're going over that seam. Don't be a lead foot. <laughs> Yes, and on Wednesday, the Walt was too fast for me. <laughs> the lead foot Larry, it really was. I was like, ah, oh, this is going way too crazy. I can't handle that. <laughs> and if you guys are really, really interested in seeing a uh, free motion tree come together, uh, maybe we can do that tomorrow on the live stream. If uh, maybe Pop can focus in with the big camera there, right over here, and, and then so you can see what I'm doing and how I came up with the tree idea. And you could just do it right on your domestic with your your uh, little um, free motion foot, okay? And if you're not sure what a free motion foot looks like, it is this thing right here. Hopefully you can see it. It's got a little uh, solid toe and it got a little spring and it bounces up and down as you're stitching around. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Very handy and uh, you can do some very fun stuff like I did with the snowman. I did that with this, the foot rate on this machine. All right, now we're going to sew our three rows together, our three sets of two, you know what I mean. And then our cardinal is done. I'm very excited. It's like the slow reveal. <laughs> very cute. I love cardinals. And cardinals mean so much to a lot of people. Um, when I was out with my day adventure with Joe Marie, she was talking about cardinals and how they, they are uh, like members of their family that have passed and come back to visit and so on and so forth. So, you know, I just, I thought it was just really touched. I was very moved by the Cardinal. So I really wanted to make sure that it was in our Christmas quilt for many, many reasons, not just, you know, just not just that. So we're going to put those little ones together and then look, you'll be done. Isn't it cute? Totally cute. Totally cute. Yeah, I think she picked up um, a salt and pepper shaker that day of the Cardinals. We were out and about. It's our old quilt shop adventures. <laughs> 
I found some um, batiks that were only like 17 a meter and that's how you have to go is to the little shops out in the boondock sort of thing to, to shop and, and, and be willing to pay cash too, so. They don't always have the store overhead, right? Because it's usually a building that, you know, they're living in or something like that. So uh, they can sell things a little bit cheaper. So if you're willing to go on a little bit of adventure, you know, you can score yourself some really good deals. All right, now we'll sew the bottom one on and then give it a press. I tried to line up my seams the best I could. Looks pretty good. Last little row here, and then our cardinal is done. And I hope you enjoyed this block. And thank you very much for watching and liking and subscribing and voting and upvoting and keeping the secret word and following along and hopefully winning the tree skirt on the live streams. So there we go. Perfect. One more seam. And then we are D O N E. Okay. And you don't have to worry about um, sending your quilt top out to a long arm or anything like that. You're going to be able to quilt it on your machine, okay? I, we're going to do one row at a time, and it's going to look beautiful, and you're going to be happy with the results. Okay, so don't, don't be intimidated. You got, you got this. And if you want it long-armed, send it to me. <laughs> I'll long-arm it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Little press. I keep slipping out of my chair. Must be wearing slippery pants today or something. Very, very cute. I am in love with them. Absolutely in love with them. All right, let's move my little, my snowman dudes over here. There, isn't he cute? We'll square him up just a smidgey widge. Of course, with fabric manipulation, they things want to go where they want to go. Okay. Now we know that's a nice flat edge there. Right here. And if you take off a little bit too much, that's okay. That's what that little curmudgeon thingamabobber piece is for. Don't worry about it. Don't sweat the st small stuff, me. It's not worth it. Not worth it. All right, we are almost done. One more side, and then I will show you this big, beautiful block we've been working on. And again, thank you very much for liking and subscribing to our channel. We greatly appreciate it here at the Mama Pop Quilt Shop. And be sure to check out some of our other videos. Here we go, Mr. Cardinal. Isn't he awesome? What do you think, Pop? Looks good? Thumbs up from Pop. All right. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody, and we'll see you tomorrow for the live stream, okay? Big hugs. See you soon. Bye-bye.